Hello friends, I welcome you all to new video of uh, .NET Tricks Amazon Web Services course. But now in this uh, particular video, if you remember last time we created the account and we made ourselves uh, familiar with uh, AWS console and out of these five, this one was pre uh, green checked, we created password policy. Now I will uh, show you how we can activate MFA, how we can create individual IAM user. Uh, using groups to assign permission and other some stuff. So to begin with the first thing that you are looking at this is actually the IAM console if if you are wondering how you can reach to this let me start from the beginning this is the AWS console which you will get once you logged in to your account like I told you last time here in the services go and click on IAM so here if you see uh, I am user sign in link is some big number which I am very much sure that many of people have you hard time memorizing it. So what we can do we can actually customize it and we can provide some name of which we are comfortable with. So in this case I am going to give it the same name the cloud guy. Yes create. So it's already exists so I cannot take this alias for uh, my account. Uh, let me put it in some sort of on my website name the noble guy uh, it's a it's a one of the domain that I have purchased the noble guy and you see here it's now it's the uh, instead of number you see here the name which I put up so in this way you can customize it as per your convenience and as per your comfort now how we can activate the multi-factor authentication it's been recommended that you immediately we did we are doing this <laughs> video after some gap but it is recommended that you activate your MFA on your root account as soon as possible in fact immediately so you click on it you click manage MFA so we are not going to use hardware MFA we are going to use virtual MFA or uh, we can click on next step uh, there you should have some application installed AWS MFA compatible application what are these these are common Google authenticator app Windows authenticator app so if you see virtual MFA what are the uh, for Android device there are Google and TK authenticator or, or Authy2 factor authentication iPhone Google authenticator Authy2 factor authentication and for Windows phone it's authenticator app so any one of these app you can have and you can install it you can install it on the device which is connected to your Google account uh, and you can install it so I have it this application installed on my phone you can go and install it from Play Store or App Store on your respective Android or iPhone device okay and in Windows from the Windows Microsoft Store you can get this app and now these are some stuff that they've been shared some hardware devices are you need to purchase these are I can say that these are pretty much uh, worthy price of these devices but uh, in case we you don't want to purchase a virtual MFA device will do the same job for you now again go to this and click on next step now this is the uh, this is something which is the code that you are going to see okay uh, now we are going to uh, configure it so I have this I have uh, this screen with me as you can see this is my phone screen I am using oneplus uh, phone and here is my google authenticator app okay so I can I have some accounts here so here I can if I want I can add the new account here I have already some accounts pre-configured and in some time they keep on changing the code so I just go and click add so now I need to scan the barcode I'll get the option on my phone so okay there's some kind of actually due to just a moment actually my uh, wire uh, got uh, disconnected so here is our app I'll click on it and uh, there was some technical issue so you can see the barcode here will click on this plus sign here at the bottom at the bottom and now it will ask for the permission to scan the barcode we will scan the barcode it has scanned it now we will need to provide the code here so and we will wait for the code to get refreshed so I am looking at it at my phone screen now click activate now you see MFA device was successfully associated with your account click finish now if I go and uh, uh, refresh this page let me reduce the screen size here so that now you can see both the screens so if I see that uh, my it's still showing an exclamation mark here 
But if I go and uh, refresh this page, uh, now it will activate MFA on your root account. So this is also green check. Now, if I need to log in into this account, let me go ahead and uh, sign out. I'll click on sign into the console. I'll type the password for my account. Now it will ask for the MFA code. Now this one, this last one is the actual the code. Sometimes you may get uh, confused which account is associated to which one. Yes, that could be the uh, reason of uh, some kind of uh, confusion, but you copy it and you paste it here and click submit and it has now verified and now you are inside your account. And if you go here, your second account is also a second option is also uh, will uh, you will find green check. Now coming to the third option, create individual IM users because uh, AWS doesn't recommend using a root account for a common day to day tasks because root account provide you too much power, too much accessibility uh, rights you have. So sometimes if uh, these credentials get leaked out because of any XYZ reasons and your account may get compromised and the person can uh, actually uh, the person can launch too many services, very costly services, expensive services and uh, you may uh, means it may be damaging to your budget and as well as your uh, trust in the market. So how we can do this? We can either click on this users or we can click on manage users in both the ways we can go like we can click on manage users the same window we are reaching here. So users so we can give it a username and see all these stuff whatever we are doing it's globally applicable it's not like that it is region specific regions are all grayed out here it is globally applicable now if i go here let me give it a name the cloud guy and uh, just i want to provide uh, aws management console access that's it uh, i want to give it a custom password let me type some password which means the our uh, password requirement policy. So su suppose if I try to, if you remember last time we configured one password policy. So if I try to type it here, it won't accept this password because of the password policy that I created, that I implemented. And if you remember in last video, we implemented a password policy. So I will type a password which is in coherence with the recommended policy. I can choose it user must create a new password at si next sign in or I can uncheck it. So I will uncheck it because I am the user and I am creating it for myself. Next is the permission. By default, if I don't associate any permission, everything is in the denial mode. I cannot access anything apart from logging into the account. So if I just review it, it will tell the user has no permission. Still, we can go ahead and create user. Now this, the username is there, the cloud guy. And you can see what are the things happened here. We can send an email or, and we can close it. Accesses policies we can attach later on also. Now if this user want to access the console, how will this user do that? This user cannot go and use the same screen, same AWS uh, link that I as a root account user is uh, using to logging into the AWS console. For this user, there is a specific link that this user has to use and from where we can find that link you click on user then security credentials under the security credential you will see this console link this is the link which you need to share with the user apart from username and the password that you created for him to uh, so that user can access and carry out its uh, given tasks his or her given tasks but uh, let me copy it now if I go to the dashboard again, I'll see that create individual IAM user is has been also green checked. Now if I want to access it, let me go into the private window and copy this. I hope you remember the username. The username was the cloud guy. This is the account ID or alias that if you remember I created over there when I customized my uh, link here. So this is the account alias. Username is the noble guy the cloud guy and password will be the password that I set it up while uh, creating the custom password which also meets our password policy requirements. So if I click on it label to sign in to the account. But please remember that this user doesn't have any kind of permissions. So if this person try to do anything he won't be able to do 
you are not authorized to describe running instances you are not authorized to describe dedicated means this fellow will not be able to do anything at all okay no accesses at all see everywhere it is it is not authorized not authorized why because we haven't associated any permission to this user now if i go back and uh, the one last step that is remaining is use groups to assign permission so we are going to create a group in the in the similar way we can go from here manage groups or we can click on this group we'll create a group and we'll give a name as admins or let's say we say developer group who are going to deploy the application so developer group needs certain permissions so you will see group name must be maximum 128 characters and contain only alphanumeric characters and or following so we cannot give a space so that's a standard practice that we should follow let's see now what kind of access we are talking about here the developer access so initially we can provide this fellow an administrator kind of access this mark is for the aws managed policy this uh, cube orange or yellowish cube mark is for the aws managed policy you can create your own policy also and when you want to provision those policies attach those policies how you can find those either you can filter or you can go to policy type and go for customer managed policy right now we have a, we haven't created any policy this is our very new account so right now we haven't created any policy that's why we are unable to see any policy here but we click on aws and if we want we can go and see also what kind of policy it is click next step we can edit policies also here so this is the developer group if i click on it what kind of permission it has administrator access and if we want to show what kind of policy it is so this is the simple json script the more restriction you will put the custom tailor made restriction you will put or accessibility you will put this script will keep on increasing so right now what does it say it says version a statement what is the effect allow in the uh, default mode everything is denied mode just like you saw earlier now action for every action on every resource allow for every action on every resource we can simulate the policy also and create our own policy which will uh, listed under get listed under customer man managed policy so this is the way that we can uh, simulate now uh, this policy uh, got attached now we want to add user into this group but uh, first let me show you this also got green check now we want to provide this user some permission so either we can attach the policy direct add permission directly here existing policy directly or we can copy permission from some other user if we have multiple users like this this fellow is going to be a part of developer group so whatever developer junior developer we have the policy that we have assigned previously to a junior developer we will co pay, copy and paste the same policy to this new developer also or we can directly go ahead and add user to the particular group so right now we only created one group we can add this user to this particular group and automatically whatever policies or permission assigned to this group will be assigned to this our new user so next review now this user will become part of developer group now if i go to the same user if i click on it and if i see this user has the same permission because of the group so right now it will also mention that why this this fellow has a policy so it will listed under attached from group if i go and want to give a separate permission individual permission to this fellow like attach existing policy directly and i want to give any alexa for business device setup this policy i want to attach i can attach it directly maybe this new fellow is doing some independent project which no one else in the company is doing so now one policy is attached directly to this individual one policy is he this fellow received from due to the group and there are certain restriction you can attach only 10 policies individual policies to a uh, individual user 10 independent policies to a particular user not more than that so right now we don't need it just x that out now this policies get implemented in real time there is no wait time here if we go here and i hope i need not to log in uh, log out or log in yeah so see this fellow uh, is immediately got the requisite access because we attach the policies and this is also uh, the thing that you should see 
while logging into the console this is the way the username will appear the cloud guy at the rate the noble guy if you are in a root account you will only see the account name here at the rate kind of notation you will find in when you are using a custom made console link dedicated for you now this user has the policy attached this is the same user administrator policy which is quite a powerful policy you should not assign this to someone who is not knowledgeable enough for handling aws console so now this fellow can carry out all the task so earlier if you remember this guy was getting here messages not authorized not authorized now he or she can do whatever one type of task that person can do running instances creating auto scaling policy uh, creating load balancers whatever creating volumes snapshots whatever kind of task this person want to do he is free to do that stuff but this particular policy doesn't come with one single stuff that is accessing billing dashboard for this particular accessibility you need to separately enable the billing part otherwise this person cannot see it even though this new user has the uh, administrator access you need to individually enable this permission to that user so that's it guys i guess that's a pretty much long but um, knowledgeable uh, uh, video which is quite uh, enriching you in terms of aws handling so we got all things green check as per aws recommendation as per aws compliance part now we are ready to move ahead and creating actual things and showing you real time demos and how you can leverage different services for your business requirement or for your individual projects so thank you guys see you in the next video thank you